How do you go from being rejected by Lamborghini to building the most exclusive and successful car brand in the world? It sounds like a plot from a Hollywood movie, doesn't it? But what if I told you that such stories don't just play out in movies, but are also the reality of a man who turned a rejection into fuel to establish his own sports car brand and blow away all competition? This is why Horatio Pagani has been Lamborghini's biggest mistake. To understand why Pagani is Lamborghini's biggest mistake, we need to go back in time for a moment, because Horatio Pagani's story started in a tiny village of Casilda, Argentina, where, from a young age, he was a young visionary dreaming of speed and luxury on four wheels. This dream was developed in a humble piazzita, where balsa wood and chocolate can scraps became the canvas for his early car models. Under the artistic guidance of his mother, Pagani developed an eye for beauty that would later define his car designs. His journey from crafting makeshift models to building a functional motorcycle at just 15 years old showcases a mix of creativity and mechanical genius. In 1982, at the age of 27, Horatio Pagani's passion for cars carried him across the Atlantic from Argentina to Italy. He came ready to prove himself, not only because he was young and ambitious, but also because he had already learned a lot about design and engineering by building his own motorcycle and getting good at materials like fiberglass. His talent and dedication didn't go unnoticed. A letter of recommendation from the legendary racing figure Juan Manuel Fangio opened the door for an interview at Lamborghini. His path at Lamborghini wasn't solely defined by ambition and immediate acceptance. He started in a more entry-level position, gradually earning his stripes and demonstrating his talents. The letter of recommendation from Fangio undoubtedly acted as a powerful opening act, but Pagani's own skills and dedication fueled his rise within the company. His journey wasn't without challenges. Adapting to a new country, language, and company culture wasn't easy. He had to prove himself within the established hierarchy and overcome skepticism towards his innovative ideas. It was his technical expertise, meticulous craftsmanship, entrepreneurial spirit, and unwavering passion that ultimately won over key figures at Lamborghini. His dedication and innate talent did not go unnoticed, leading to rapid promotions within the company. Pagani's interest in carbon fiber technology led him to the composites department, where he became a strong promoter of its use in automotive manufacturing. He foresaw the important role of carbon fiber in creating lighter and stronger vehicles, a vision so strong that he personally invested in an autoclave, which at the time was not cheap at all, but essential for processing this innovative material. Despite his faith and investment, Lamborghini's not wanting to depart from traditional materials and methods represented a significant roadblock. This resistance highlighted a stark contrast between Pagani's forward-thinking approach and Lamborghini's adhering to standard procedures. His belief in its potential for lighter, stronger, and more aerodynamic cars led him to champion its adoption within the company. However, Lamborghini, with established practices and traditional materials, was hesitant to fully embrace this new technology. Frustrated by Lamborghini's resistance, Pagani left the company in 1991, taking his passion for carbon fiber and design with him. This marked the end of his chapter at Lamborghini, but it was just the beginning of his own automotive legacy. Fueled by his vision and driven by the belief that his ideas had merit, Pagani founded his own company, Pagani Automobili, in 1998. His first creation, the Zonda, unveiled in 1999, became an instant sensation. Weighing a mere 1250 kilograms, nearly half its Lamborghini rivals, the Zonda danced on corners. Its sculpted carbon fiber body was beautiful and functional, channeling air for ultimate downforce. Awards poured in, not just from car magazines, but from prestigious institutions like the Pebble Beach Concours d'Elegance. Even Hollywood took notice too, featuring the Zonda in blockbusters like Fast and Furious. But Pagani wasn't done. The Huayra, his next creation, pushed the boundaries further. Innovative design, cutting edge tech, and an interior handcrafted with the precision of a Renaissance work of art. And now, the Utopia. Each Pagani seems to outdo the last, raising the bar for the entire industry. From the sculpted carbon fiber to the driver-centric cockpit, every detail whispers of passion and precision. It's the culmination of Pagani's vision, a living testament to what Lamborghini could have had if they'd embraced his ideas. Unlike mass-produced marvels, Pagani cars are crafted with an artisan's touch, each one a unique expression of automotive artistry. This deliberate scarcity isn't just a marketing ploy, it's the cornerstone of their philosophy. By producing only one to two vehicles per week, Pagani ensures careful attention to detail and maintains an aura of exclusivity. This exclusivity comes at a price. 
The Zonda debuted with a starting price of $500,000, a figure that has grown even more enormous with the Huayra, $1.6 million, and the newly unveiled Utopia, $3.1 million. But for discerning collectors, these hefty price tags represent an investment in automotive royalty. The limited production makes Paganis not just cars, but collectors' items, their value appreciating with each passing year. Yet Pagani's success isn't just measured in the exclusivity it cultivates. Despite the limited production volume, the company boasts impressive financial health. Revenue has steadily climbed, reaching $130 million in 2021, a testament to the demand for their unique creations. So for Lamborghini, Pagani's departure was a fissure in their foundation, a missed opportunity that sent shockwaves through the industry. And here's why. Pagani was a talented designer for Lamborghini, he was a passionate supporter of innovation. His belief in carbon fiber's potential to revolutionize car design was infectious, and his personal investment in an autoclave was a testament to his firm belief. Losing him was like losing a lighthouse in a storm, leaving Lamborghini adrift in a sea of traditional materials and methods. Imagine the impact if Lamborghini had embraced Pagani's vision. They could have been the pioneers of carbon fiber supercars, shaping the industry with lighter, stronger, and more aerodynamic vehicles. Instead, they clung to established practices, watching from the sidelines as Pagani, free from their strict beliefs, went on to create the iconic Zonda, a car that redefined what supercars could be. Also, Pagani's departure birthed a formidable competitor. His company, Pagani Automobili, became a constant reminder of Lamborghini's missed opportunity. Every Pagani success, every design accolade, was a prickling thorn in their side, a constant echo of what if. It took Lamborghini years to truly embrace carbon fiber. Only after their acquisition by the Volkswagen Group in 1998 did they begin incorporating it into their vehicles, playing catch up to a technology championed by the man they once let go. While they eventually found success with models like the Murcielago and Aventador, the delay was undeniable, a consequence of failing to recognize the potential Pagani saw so clearly. If you enjoyed this video, I recommend this video to you where we talk more about Lamborghini. Also, don't forget to subscribe.